is the life that you're currently living your dream life? Because if it isn't, you're likely to be held back by fear. Today, we're going to be tackling a subject that affects us all, fear and anxiety. In this video, you'll learn the science behind fear and how it's triggered in our brain, the four main triggers that can enhance fear, the secret method to reframe fear, and why overcoming fear is essential for our personal growth. By the end of this video, you'll have everything you need to know to not only face fear, but to thrive. Fear and anxiety are natural responses to stress, but they become problematic when they start to interfere with our daily lives and preventing us from where we want to go. Fear and anxiety are besties. They're each other's shadows. Now this becomes really complex when they start to embed themselves into our lives. They become really difficult to combat and that's where I'm here to untangle them and to get us in control of our lives as we should be, by the way. This is our lives. We're not living as a result of fear. And if we're not careful, fear will become the driving force of our daily behaviors. So first things first, what is fear? Fear is an intensely uncomfortable primal experience that runs through our bodies. Now, the reason why this happens throughout our bodies is because it's triggered in our brains by the anticipation or expectation of a perceived threat or risk. Fear is activated through our amygdala. Now, the amygdala is a small almond-shaped structure in the back of the brain, which is part of a larger system and network called the limbic system. Now, the amygdala is closely linked with fear, emotions, and surprisingly, motivation. Fear and motivation being triggered by the same part of our minds. So that is the secret source here, is the understanding of the chemistry, of the network, and the reactions that are happening in our minds whilst we're triggered by a feared state. You may have heard of the fight or flight response. Now this is our body's way of raising an alarm that there may be a problem and that we need to be prepared to either fight or to flee. Now this is our amygdala going, hang on a minute guys, something's up, we need to get out of here or we need to fight for our lives. This was really important way back in evolution where we we had a bit of a lizard brain, if you like, and this was just an initial natural response for us to get out of danger or to fight for survival. We now live in a very different world, as you can imagine. Our bodies haven't changed with the times because it takes such a long time to evolve and to change genetically, which is why we now still have these triggers in our minds and it can still save us from danger. For example, that natural response where you're like, how did I just pull my friend in from the road before they got hit by a car? That is our amygdala saving our lives and that's what it should be doing. However, when it starts to integrate itself into our daily lives, it can become a right pain in the ass. We need to differentiate the difference because our amygdala, bless it, it doesn't know the difference between a life-threatening situation and Sunday scaries. It doesn't know. And we have to train it. And that's down to us. And you know what's really hard? Is when we feel that fear and we've got that fight or flight or freeze, which is another adaptation, if you like. There's the fight, flight, freeze. I'm a freezer and it sounds ridiculous, but I'm one of those that just is completely shell-shocked, so I'm probably a bit useless when it comes to evolution. But thankfully, we're not in the dinosaur age anymore, and I probably don't need to worry about dinosaurs, <laughs> only seagulls. So because the amygdala doesn't know the difference between a life-threatening situation and Sunday scaries, the results can be the same in our bodies. There are four main triggers that can enhance fear, and these are uncertainty, struggle, change, and attention. By uncertainty, it's kind of self-explanatory. Not knowing what's going to happen next can leave you feeling really anxious, really fearful. And that's kind of what the Sunday scaries are, right? So it gets to Sunday evening or Sunday and you're worried about the next working week because you don't know what's going to happen. And that's the uncertainty part and that can enhance the fear in our mind. The next one, struggle. Now this is facing ongoing difficulties. It could be financially, it could be with a relationship with yourself, imposter syndrome. This struggle can create a feeling of fear throughout our bodies and it's important to start to identify which one of these or multiple triggers 
are actually enhancing the fear in our minds. Another one is change. Now this is adapting or adjusting to new situations. People don't like change, but if you reframe that, change is good. Now, Tupac once said, change is good for any of us. I think change, if we lean into it, it can open new doors and give us new pathways to explore and to grow and to level up. Now, the last one is attention. Have you ever been in a room where somebody asks for a volunteer? and it's a volunteer to go up on stage and you look around the room and not one person has put their hand up. It's that typical not wanting to be the centre of attention. You don't know what's going to come up, you don't know if they're going to ask you a question, if you'll feel embarrassed. So typically we all sort of sit there and we're sort of being polite, we're not taking opportunities and we're actually talking ourselves down from new experiences. And it's absolutely no different to starting a YouTube channel. You may be so concerned by the attention that you'll get or the lack of attention because that has equal and opposite results. If you get too much attention but it's negative from maybe people you know or judgment by others or you get no attention at all, it can leave you feeling empty and embarrassed. So this is another reason why this integrates itself into fear. Fear is important. Scratch that. Fear is crucial. I've started to reframe fear. Fear is a great indicator that you can start to push the boundaries of your comfort zone, to gradually work through exposure therapy and to evolve into the next level of your life. Now, you know what they say about leveling up, right? It's gradual, it takes time, but it also takes growing out of your shell or out of your limiting beliefs of where you are now into the next level. Think of anything, think of a butterfly for example. It doesn't end up a caterpillar at the end of its life, does it? It has to go through its metamorphosis and change. And that change is one of the four triggers that enhance the feeling of fear. So if we start to look at this as a growth opportunity, as a signal, so rather than that alarm bell signalling that something's going wrong and that we're in danger, if we start to allow that amygdala to be our alarm bell but triggered into this is a new opportunity, this is something that I could actually grow from and meet new people and push myself, build my knowledge, this will build not only more resilience to fear, it will build more self-confidence. Fear won't affect you like it currently does. And if we don't lean into fear, it can cause procrastination. Or worse, it can cause zero action in our lives. All of those opportunities that come up, would you like to volunteer? No. Would you like to raise a question? No. Would you like to learn about? No. Try and think back to any opportunities that you had but you were too scared. It may have been a competition and you just didn't really have the confidence to do it or there was something in the back of your mind, maybe the amygdala, telling you, don't do it, don't do it, this is too scary, this isn't good for you and your whole body was like, no, I can't. I've been there. I'm sure you have as well and it's not pleasant but the most important thing is to not live with regret so it's better to challenge ourselves to push ourselves out of our comfort zones rather than to live with the what ifs that will rule your life eventually right now let's talk about the different types of fear we have the specific phobias which i'm sure you're well aware of it could be spiders snakes heights Clowns, the fear of social conversation or being judged or not knowing somebody, agoraphobia, which is a fear of places that might be difficult to escape from. There's also panic disorder, these constant thought patterns that intensify fear and keep you in a state of panic. Existential fear is a really interesting one. This is a fear relating to our existence, our life's purpose. We are at our best when we're working at the edge of our abilities using fear as a weapon rather than a limiter and this can really help us level up our lives most importantly this is when we exit our comfort zone and we are now edging towards the level up leveling up doesn't happen overnight does it especially if you're in a video game for example you don't just jump from level one to nine you have to go through the motions and learn different tweaks and nuances along the way this is no different in real life if you don't push past that fear and use 
fear as a weapon of strength and if you just turn around and go back to the comfort zone you will forever exist there your dreams go there to die and if you do want to stay there please click off this video because you're on the wrong channel let me redirect you somewhere else anywhere else maybe type in i want to live in my comfort zone on youtube and click on there and go there because you're in the wrong place i wish you good luck but I will never see you again. I'm so sorry. Now let's look at fear in a very balanced way. We will look at the pros and we will look at the cons. Fear is a useful survival mechanism. It alerts us to danger and it promptly promotes quick actions. It also improves our focus. It's like a heightened sense of security within your body, allowing you to like pick up on things that you wouldn't necessarily. It helps you retain significant events. Now, our brains are like a constant videotape. Literally store everything that's happening, every movement, every picture, every sound, smell. Now here are some cons of fear. Paralysis excessive fear can cause us to freeze and it can also lead to inaction procrastination or avoidance behaviors for example if you fear going to the dentist you may just not go even though you've got a toothache and you know that a dentist could solve that problem another con for fear is chronic stress being in a constant state of fear puts our bodies through so much stress and inflammation and those that fire together wire together in the brain that repeats in our mind if we don't stop the circuit it will cause chronic stress in our bodies and in our minds irrational behavior can lead to really poor decision making what's the secret to stopping fear and anxiety that actually works it's about retraining your brain how to respond differently to fear one powerful method that i really love is exposure therapy and cognitive behavioral therapy which is known as cbt this approach helps you rewire your brain's reaction to fear and over time it becomes less of a problem in your daily life. Fear is a great driver if used correctly. Here's how we can retrain our brains to make fear work for us. Fear and excitement have the exact same physical state in our bodies. When faced with fear, the body's sympathetic nervous system triggers the fight or flight response. If you're fearful, you're likely to experience symptoms such as a churning sensation in your stomach, feeling lightheaded, dizziness, difficulty swallowing, an increased heart rate, faster breathing, maybe even your throat closing in a bit. Symptoms of excitement can be a feeling of butterflies in the stomach, trembling, weakness, sweaty palms, increased heart rate, faster breathing, and even perspiration. The key is to reframe the fierce symptoms into excitement the more that you do this even if you don't believe it the brain doesn't know the difference you just have to keep telling yourself that those nerves and those feelings in your stomach the raised heart rate is a feeling of excitement when you first notice the sensation of fear take it as an alarm bell in your body saying this is something that's good this is going to be good what am i going to learn from this experience where is this going to take me do the opposite of what the fear is telling you to do. If it's telling you not to go, go. I used to experience this with networking. I used to be so scared to go by myself that I wouldn't go. And when you see everyone in the room at the end of the night having pictures taken together, I used to look at those photos and just be like, why did I not go? They look like they're having so much fun. That was a really great panel. I would have really enjoyed seeing that panel. Why did I not turn up just because I didn't know anybody? I retrained myself to walk into those rooms. There was only one person that was ever slightly rude to me. They just thought they were better than me and I don't wanna be around that sort of energy anyway. So just let them have it and move on. And I will caveat this, of course, unless you're in a state of danger where your amygdala is alarming you to get out or to fight for your life, then of course, let it do its work. Let me give you a quick story before we move on to our next step. You may or may not have seen my odd muse behind the scenes fashion campaign. I watched a really empowering YouTube video and after that I saw this opportunity flag up on Instagram and it said apply to be in the next campaign. I don't know why but I put my name down. I didn't think anything of it. This happened. Everyone had the best time. People that I spoke to were saying that they nearly didn't go. There were people that didn't show up. 
by the way. I really understand why they didn't because I was nearly one of them, but I'm so glad that I used that fear and trained it to be excitement because it was the best day. To sum it up, fear and anxiety are more common than you think, but they're not unbeatable. By understanding the root causes of fear and anxiety and understanding why certain methods don't always work, like if somebody tells you to calm down when you're experiencing fear, that's never gonna work. Think of what the body is doing when you're in a state of fear. The amygdala's flagging off that there's something going on. Like the body is just like ready for fight or flight and somebody's telling you to calm down. What are you like when you're calm? You're like this. How on earth is your body gonna go from this to this? It, it doesn't work. It will never happen. So it's the worst advice anyone can ever tell you when you're feeling a state of fear. You have to allow your body to feel that and retrain it to be excited or at least think it's excited. Let's trick our minds. Imagine how different your life's going to be when you finally tackle fear and anxiety. These are my practical strategies for managing fear and anxiety. And the most important thing to note is that we don't have to wait until we're in a state of fear and anxiety to start to practice these. If we implement these into our daily lives, we will start to just naturally navigate our brains a little better. No doubt, if you're suddenly in a feeling of fear and you haven't been practicing these strategies, you're not gonna remember them. You're not even gonna think about them. You're just going to be in the state of fear. So if we practice these daily or as often as possible, then these will really help you moving forward. So step number one is mindfulness and meditation. Mindfulness and meditation is super important. It helps reduce our anxiety, our cortisol levels, and it also improves our emotional regulation. There are many apps that you can use, but the ones that I know of are Calm and Headspace. Now these are mindfulness and meditation apps. There's so much content on there that you can listen to when you're feeling stressed, when you wake up in the morning as part of your morning routine, before you go to bed. There's just so many different ways of using them. So maybe give those a try. I also love the grounding technique. Now you may have heard of this before, but a grounding technique is essentially just grounding yourself in the space, in the now, just being present with where you currently are, what you're currently doing, observing your breath, a great way of grounding yourself is to walk barefoot on grass. Now this may sound a bit strange, but I really highly recommend this. Go into your back garden, a local park, or just somewhere with a bit of grass. Maybe don't just randomly take your shoes off if you're like in a high street somewhere. And just being present on the grass is just a really great way to anchor yourself. Step number two is gradual exposure. Facing our fears in small, manageable steps helps us desensitize ourselves to our fears. Now within this exposure therapy part of this session, I want you to follow what I'm about to suggest. So starting with making a list. Make a list of situations, things, and places that you fear the most. Step number two, build a fear ladder. Starting with the least scary fear on the first step, working your way up to the most scary fear at the top step of this ladder. So if you just do it, if you've got say five fears, you're going to do five steps. The next step, if you pardon the pun, is facing your fears. Now this is where the exposure therapy starts. Starting with the first step, which is what causes the least fear and anxiety, we're going to gradually expose ourselves to this step, okay? And once you've completed that, you move on to the next one. As you go through the ladder, you get more confident, you fear less because you're doing more, and it helps you resolve some of your fears through gradual exposure therapy. It's really important to practice this. It's not going to be a do it once and it's completed. This may take years, but if we just gradually do it over and over again through repeated exposure, it really helps us. Reward brave behavior. So for example, you've gone to a networking event, reward yourself. Whether it's a nice little cheesecake from M&S on the way home, reward yourself for brave behaviour. Step number three is cognitive behavioural therapy, which is also known as CBT. This type of therapy is really helpful when it comes to recognising thought 
patterns. You may be familiar with the three C's of CBT. The three C's of CBT is catch it. If you recognize a certain thought pattern that's causing you fear or anxiety, you need to catch what that thought is. The second C is to check it. Is it real or is it true? So you need to catch the thought, is it real, is it true? And then the third C is to change it. This is where you reprogram your mind to letting it go. I'm not a therapist, so this is something that you should really work through at therapy with a trained professional. Step number four is breathing techniques. Working on, on our breath work helps us calm the nervous system during fearful moments. Try using the 333 technique. Now this is breathing in through your nose for three seconds holding your breath for three seconds and breathing slowly out of your mouth for three seconds. Exhaling out of your mouth helps you release more carbon dioxide, which is better than exhaling through your nose. Practicing daily breath work really helps you start to control your breathing, especially if you're in a state of fear or anxiety. I know that panic attacks can be awfully crippling, especially if you feel like you can't catch your breath. Physical activity helps reduce stress and boost your overall mood. Take a walk in nature, do a gym class with a friend, go for a swim and a sauna and self-care session at your local gym and just start to take care of yourself every day. By doing this more frequently, you will help naturally just reduce stress in the body anyway. The take action now method is reducing fear by taking action. The sooner you take action, the less fear that you feel. The more time that goes on, the more fear you feel. Here's how I practice managing fear. Step number one, acknowledge and accept the fear. Recognize your fear rather than ignoring it. Step number two is set realistic goals. Break down the fearful tasks into actionable steps, like I mentioned before. The little fear ladder helping you expose yourself to the fears gradually. Step number three is positive visualization. Imagine successful outcomes before they happen rather than imagining worst case scenarios. Step number four is seek support. Talk about your fears with your family, your friends or your therapist. And step number five is to keep a fear journal. Track your fears and your progress over time. So as I mentioned in the three C's, the first one is to catch that fear. If we write it down in our fear journal, it helps us track our progress and see how far we've come. Why is overcoming fear so useful for self development. Overcoming fear is essential for our self-development. Most importantly, it allows you to exit your comfort zone, to leave it behind. It enhances your ability to handle stress and it boosts your confidence. Conquering fears allows you to pursue opportunities and goals that were previously intimidating and that allows you to work towards your professional and personal growth. Remember, there is always a fork in the road and I know I've said this before, but there is. There's always a fork in the road and you decide which direction you take. Here are some book recommendations that I have for you and mainly because I really needed one of these yesterday actually. I started re-listening to Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. I've had that book for so many years on Audible. I used to listen to it all of the time and I really needed it yesterday as a bit of comfort. And it's such a powerful memoir of pushing through fear and pain and what you can really get from it and what you learn about yourself in the process. So I highly recommend. David Goggins is just a true icon. If you've never heard of him, you should go check him out. He's just incredible, such an inspiration. You've probably heard of this book. It's quite an iconic one, especially surrounding the subject of fear. The book is Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway by Susan Jeffers. It offers practical advice on moving through fear and improving your quality of life. I've only read that book once. Once you've read it, you know it pretty well. There's a quote that I absolutely love and it's everything that you've ever wanted is on the other side of fear. Fear kills more dreams than failure ever will. The fear we don't face becomes our limits. If it scares you, it's a sign you need to do it. Fear is the brain's way of saying there's something important that we need to overcome. And sometimes the fear won't go away. So you'll need to do it afraid. If you found this video helpful and want to see more videos like this, then hit the thumbs up so that I know that you like this type of content. Otherwise, 
I will continue just delving into different ideas and see what really works for you. Also, share this video with somebody who may find it helpful. If they're really experiencing dreadful anxiety or fear at the moment, then maybe they could go through the fear ladder and try and implement some of the breathing techniques, maybe read one of the books and help themselves out of that fear. For more content on self-development, conquering fears and building confidence, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss out on any future content. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Until next time, stay fabulous.